Hey, what's up? I'm Rafael Di Furia, aka Rafi D is me. Back at it again on another beautiful Friday night, but this week we are going to be. Well, this is the Duomo here in my new town, Oro Vigo. This is not where we're going. Where we're going is actually down there. I don't know if you can see that green building, but there is a gelateria there by the title of this video. I'm sure you can guess what might be going on in this video. One of the most important things when moving to a new place, some of that important scientific research to really define if it's truly the correct place for you and can be done before or after you make that move, is to find the right gelato, the right gelateria. And today we are going on this journey, but before we get too much deeper into this video, if you'd like to see more content like this about moving to Italy, Italian dual citizenship, and living life abroad, be sure to subscribe with that notification bell turn on. And if you'd like to give this video a like, I'd really appreciate it, as it does help out the channel. And if you'd like to help make more videos like this possible and support this channel on a monthly basis, you can go to rafaeldifuria.com slash Patreon. Or if you can only help out once, you can go to rafaeldifuria.com slash support. Every little bit does make a huge difference in the ability to keep making more content like this. And especially something like this where I can go out and show you guys a little bit of this piece of Italy, this delicious taste of Italy. So, you know what, let's get started already and head down here. Before making this video, I was debating how I wanted to do this. Am I going to taste the same flavor at every place I go, or am I going to try different flavors that just kind of stand out and pop out? So I was kind of leaning more in the direction of maybe just trying one flavor at every place. But not every place you go always has the same flavors. There are a few flavors you can kind of rely on, like for example, stracciatella, which is basically chocolate chip, or even um, pistachio. But And so I was debating between the two, because stracciatella, that one's a hard one to mess up, but it can give you a good idea of the base of the type of ice cream. Well, ice cream would almost be offensive to call it, because it's different. Gelato is something different. Here, though, in Italy, you do have ice cream and you do have gelato, but they're both called the same thing. Just one word, gelato. In the end, I decided to just go for pistachio. Why? Because in the States, for example, you get, like, neon green, just, like, something that just can't be good for you. And in Italy, you find a mix of the two, and I feel like it's actually... It's a delicate flavor, and if it's done right, it's done right. If it's botched, it's completely wrong. And so, I think it's also a good way to tell what is kind of a better quality place. Who does the right flavor? So, this video, that's what I'm going to try. Just may go to five places, but let's start out with this one first. Dolce Castigo. Alright, it's got the goods, so I'm just gonna take this around the corner. But, ah, oh, I should have gotten a cone. I almost always get things in a cup just because I prefer it, not because I'm calorie counting, it's just. I prefer it sometimes with facial hair, and especially after I used to have that beard that some of you might remember. Uh, stuff gets in that, and I just <laughs> kind of picked up this habit of getting it in a cup. But anyway, I won't make you watch me eat it, but we'll have a quick rundown after. Okay, so just so you can see it, it's got good color. It's not like that unnatural kind of neon green. It's actually already starting to melt, but that's because it's hot, not because of the gelato place itself. But anyway, gelato is supposed to be kind of softer anyway, not so hard. And maybe a little bit warmer than ice cream, not quite as freezing and solid. So, yeah, let's see. All right, so gelato number one, down. Knocked out, knocked out of the park. It was really good. I, it was a very intense, nutty flavor, but it almost had, to me, what almost tasted like peanut. I don't know if that was just me or if they actually put some kind of peanut in there, but it tasted like a little bit more than just regular pistachio. So, well, let's see. I'm curious about how the next places will compare, because I actually, I've been to three of the places today. I don't know how many I'm going to go to in the end, but I'm aiming for five. <laughs> a lot more gelato than I would normally eat. But you gotta do what you gotta do, especially when it comes to science. Sometimes you just have to make those sacrifices. <laughs> well, we're back here actually on the main street here in Rovigo. And the next place I'm going to is actually going to be Grazie uh, on the main piazza. Just there's right behind the comune, there's one gelateria, and that's the one that I end up going to the most. But 
just kind of more curious to do a taste test to see which one is actually the best, which one do I really prefer the most, because that one is the, 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 the one on the piazza, is probably the most convenient for me to get to. But there are others that are probably just about as far away from where I but I end up going more in that direction anyway. And it's a Thursday night? Yeah, Thursday night. Oh, yeah, no, no, Friday night. That's just between us. But Thursday nights here, they end up doing this kind of like street party thing. Really lively. <laughs> a lot of people out. Um, but I'm actually just going to cut through because there's a couple of places where you can th cut through and go to the main piazza. So I'm just going to go through just to the side right here. But there's a question that I've received in the past. How do you order a gelato in Italy? I've seen a couple of different ways of it being done because some places will ask you, do you want, how many flavors do you want? Some places will ask, how many scoops do you want? Or some places will just ask you for a size. But the size thing seems to be more if they assume that you don't speak Italian. Uh, but that's also if they don't really speak English. But of course, here in Italy, you want to try is to speak a little bit. So if you want to order, basically it comes down to just saying a few simple words. They'll say hello, they'll either say ciao or salve. Um, ciao is more kind of informal, like hi, and salve is more kind of hello, and I think it has another meaning like hail or salvation, I'm not quite sure, but it's something a little different than just hello, at least for a literal translation, but if you go on like Google translation, it'll just translate to uh, hello. Or, uh, you can say, they can say like how many flavors do you want, but you can say quanti gusti or quanti sapori, how many flavors, how many tastes do you want to try, number uno, due, tre, or like if you're asking for a scoop, that would be a palina or plural paline. Actually now, just getting to the main main square here in Rovigo. So if you go into a place getting a scoop of gelato, you would say una palina di, one scoop of. Uh, but the interesting thing about palina is it's also the word in Italian for ball. Even the sport soccer in Italian is called palestra. It all has this palla in the word. So rather than asking for a scoop, it's you're asking for a, a ball of ice cream basically. So if you're ever here in Rovigo, look for the main clock tower on the main piazza and just go off to the corner. And there is a place in English which translates to the Fantasy Factory. And yeah, lives up to the name. Un cono con una palina di pistacchio, per favore. Grazie, ciao, buona sera. All right. So, got number two. This time I decided to get a cone just so I could present at the same time. This one, I kind of like the color a little bit better. It's not quite as vivid of a green, but it's still got a little bit of a green tint because it doesn't need to be completely green to be delicious. And I like this one a little bit more. It's a little bit creamier, a bit more of a delicate flavor, but the problem is I probably should have grabbed a water. Uh, just so that I could kind of cleanse the palate, as they say, just in between. But I think so far, well, <laughs> it's starting to melt too. It's, it's been really hot. We've been having a pretty good heat wave. Good, hot, not good, bad, <laughs> very bad. Anyway, I'm gonna finish this up before it melts in my hand, but I can say so far, number one position. And I can say they're both quite good. So this is gonna be a tough one to choose which gelateria is my own personal favorite. If you come here and you try these gelaterias, you may find that my choices may not line up with your choices, but hopefully I can, whoop. Okay, gotta get to work. <laughs> okay, so, final verdict on that one. Not as nutty, which is why I think I liked it more. It was much more delicate, and it just had, it had pistachio flavor. It just, it wasn't like eating the nut itself. There are some places that do this gelato where it does taste more like the nut, and there are some places that it tastes more like candy. This wasn't quite either. This just, again, that flavor of pistachio, but not like you're eating a handful of nuts. Not that that was bad. Like, the first one, that was absolutely delicious. That, like, don't get me wrong. But next, we are going to go to three places that are not quite in the center of town. And this is, in Italy, something very common anywhere you go, that you find more kind of local places. Rovigo is probably not the best example of this because this is much more of a place where people live and work 
and not so much where people travel to. I think I mentioned this that also here in Rovigo. It's got a cute center, but once you get out of the center, it doesn't look the same. I mean, this is kind of more just real Italy. It's really not trying to be this like overly touristy kind of something that it's not. It's just, it is what it is. And that's what I like about it. So the next place that I'm going to is this point that I was trying to get to before is that sometimes you really need to go off the beaten path and find those places where the locals go to. If you've traveled to Italy, going to the tourist centers and these places, it may not be the best of what's available. It'll be that something that caters more to an audience that's not always there. It's more touristy areas where they're just not as concerned about certain things and having those repeat customers. I'm sure a lot of tourist places do get people who come back every year, every couple of years and go to their one spot because that's where they had that memory that one time when they were here in Italy. But first, I'm just going to jump across the street because one cool little thing that I haven't really seen too much around Italy, it exists, but these little 24-hour cafeteria where you can get a little quick something to drink and because of this heat, water is very much on my mind. The one thing about places like this is that they're not the best bang for buck. If I were walking by a supermarket, I would have thought about maybe going there because a water bottle, like a single water bottle, uh, just from this type of place was 60 cents. For 60 cents, you could potentially get a full liter of water, but just not cold. And cold water, hot day, very good mix. Now this next place, it's really on a street where you wouldn't expect for a gelateria necessarily to be. It's on the edge of a residential neighborhood and just on the other side of it, there's not quite much. You're starting to get towards the train station already. I've heard some really good things about this one, but I've never been to it, so I'm not sure if it's open. But 7.45 on a Thursday, I think there's a chance that it'll be open. I know some of these places though, like the place that I'm planning to go to after this, is normally open until like one in the morning. So if you ever have a hankering right in the middle of the night, just, you gotta get that fix in. Places like that do exist. Even in a small little city like Rovigo. All right, I think I found it. This looks like it. Always exciting to go to a new place for the first time. I don't know if she gave me, it looks like two scoops, but yeah, whatever. Anyway, so they had two options. Oh, it's already starting to drip. You know what? Let me get to this and I'll tell you about it after. The interesting little thing about this one was they had a version with dairy and then they had a version without dairy. Generally, I will never, ever, ever consider anything that's vegan. I just don't enjoy the flavors. If I'm having something, I want the real thing. If I'm getting something sweet, I want it with sugar. If I'm getting dairy, something with dairy, I want it with dairy. If I'm getting meat, I want it with meat. <laughs> I'm, I'm old fashioned, what can I say? Cicadas, yeah, some of you commented about that on my last Rovigo video. Plenty of them here. I think they're cicadas at least. But instead of like cream, like some sort of dairy, what they'll actually do is, use olive oil. I'm kind of fascinated by that, but the couple flavors that I've had with olive oil versus without olive oil, you don't taste the olive oil. It tastes different, that's for sure. It's not bad, it's just not something that's quite for me. But if you're someone who's lactose intolerant, then I would say it's actually really not a bad way to go. Like if you can't eat that dairy, nothing wrong with it. It's still pretty like creamy tasting. And at this place, I got both the one with the dairy and without. So the flavors kind of got mixed together. This one would maybe not be my favorite. I did like it though. It's, it's kind of hard to say like, oh, one was better and one was worse. It's just because there's none of them are bad. That's the real problem here. But anyway, this next place that I'm going to, I know it's supposed to be kind of like a bit more gourmet, a bit more kind of high end, a little bit fancy. So I'm gonna check that out just to see how they do theirs. I have a feeling though, that I'm still gonna like that one that was by the main piazza the most. Also the thing is for me, like I was saying, it's in general a part of town I find myself in more than this last place that I went to or the next one that I'm going to. Not that any of them are actually far away from where I live, because really nothing in this town is far away from anything. It's a very small walkable city that is really easy to get around. I mean, just if you go just two seconds that way, you're already at the train station. You go another two seconds that way, you're at the main piazza. It's not like being in the middle of Milan, any of these kinds of places. It's a 
small, nice, livable city. This is why I'm here. I really was not looking for that big city hustle and bustle. Just not my flavor. I'm someone who can eat a lot of gelato, but I would say I'm starting to get to my limit of what's comfortable for the day. So we are now going down into another little residential area. There's a church at the end of the street. And People just living all around. Again, quite close to the center. I kind of took a little bit of a long way around to get there. There's one other place, but I think I'm gonna have to throw in the towel after this one. Maybe there'll be a part two to this video. I've been thinking anyway, because some of you have kind of mentioned it in the comments just joking. Oh, you should like try every flavor in Italy, you try every gelateria, you should write a book on gelato. <laughs> so I was like, eh, I mean, That'd be quite a project Go around the country trying gelato. I mean, something I'm totally down for, but I don't know if I could handle it. Although, actually, I could probably handle it, but the waistline. Not sure if the waistline could handle that. And here it is. It's called Godot. A little bit of a brighter green than I would normally go for, but it's still not like that neon green that you find. And when I was walking in there, I think the woman saw my camera and she started kind of checking it out, so didn't quite get any footage in there. Also, that one was set up is the, they keep the gelato kind of in these like tubs with a, a seal on the top rather than like open so that you can see. But anyway, this one is actually kept a bit colder, it seems, and it's not melting right away, but yeah, that's about to start. So let me get started on it. All right, so the final verdict for this one. It had more of that kind of nutty flavor, like the first one did, but it wasn't quite as nutty. But also, the strange thing about this one was that it was a bit cooler than the other one, so it was a bit more firm. It had the flavor of gelato, but it was kind of cold and a bit more firm, like I would call an ice cream. But still, this was absolutely not ice cream. This was still in that kind of gelato family. But yeah, I don't think I'm gonna make it to that last place I was going to go to. I've had, for sure, more than enough for today. I'm gonna have a gelato coma after this. So maybe this will be a part two, or maybe if you guys are interested, maybe I'll go to like a city like Bologna or Venice, find out what are the highest rated places and a little bit of a tour around the city as well. Maybe like check out the top three places and compare it between the three. And then also see a little bit of the surroundings just while we're going about it. So if something like that does sound interesting to you, to see a little bit more of the real side of Italy with some of the more kind of flavorful side of Italy, let me know down in the comment section below. But anyway, if you'd like to see more content like this about moving to Italy, Italian dual citizenship, and living life abroad, please be sure to subscribe with that notification bell turned on. And if you could also give this video a like, I'd really appreciate it as it does help out the channel. And of course, if you'd like to help out the channel in another way and to help make more videos like this possible on a monthly basis, you can go to rafaeldifuria.com slash Patreon, or if you can only help out one time, you can go to rafaeldifuria.com slash support. And for shirts, baby onesies, mugs, and more, you can go to rafaeldifuria.com slash N-Y-A-G gear. And of course, as always, thank you for joining me on another beautiful Friday night. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend, and I'll see you all next Friday. Later.